Many of you might look at this video and say, hey, this is the Blue Origin capsule, but why is it blurry in some parts? Well, first, this is actually China's newest crewed spacecraft. And the reason it's blurry? It's hiding a technology they call the cloud-like landing concept, which is claimed to help the vehicle land as softly as a cloud. Wait, the Chinese have something like that? Could it be better than SpaceX's Crew Dragon? On December 28, 2025, Beijing Interstellar successfully wrapped up a static thrust simulation test for the CYZ one-manned spacecraft test module. It's a big step forward for China's first manned spacecraft landing buffer system, one that Interstellar is leading the way on. To make the test happen, the team worked closely with several partners, including assembly crews, the test site, and data collection teams, to recreate a realistic ground simulation of a spacecraft landing. The goal was to put the landing buffer system through its paces, checking key performance points like how it responds to static thrust, how well multiple engines work together, and whether the system can be reused. During the test, several engines fired up and shut down smoothly and in sync, quickly producing steady thrust while keeping the test capsule stable the whole time. The results lined up closely with what the engineers had predicted, confirming that Interstellar's reverse thrust landing buffer concept is not just innovative, but practical too. This crew capsule is a really interesting one. According to details shared on the spacecraft's official website, the CYZ-1 test capsule is a full-size return capsule, measuring about 4 meters in diameter and roughly 3 meters tall. It's designed with reusability in mind, aiming for an impressive 99% reuse rate. What makes this even more notable is that it marks China's first attempt at commercial manned spaceflight. The capsule uses a push-type self-escape system and can carry up to seven crew members, with a total weight of no more than eight tons. It features a large viewing window measuring about 1.2 meters by 1 meters, and its maximum diameter stays under 5 meters. Inside, there's around 25 cubic meters of space, with extra room intentionally reserved in the center of the return capsule to improve comfort and flexibility. The design also targets a landing accuracy within about 100 meters, and each mission is expected to provide a total flight experience lasting roughly 20 to 30 minutes. The larger size and heavier weight bring added challenges, requiring more complex system design and integration, as well as much tighter manufacturing precision than smaller capsules. The test capsule also uses a hyperboloid sidewall design, which plays a big role in balancing aerodynamics and structural strength. Instead of having a simple fixed curve, the shape changes smoothly along the capsule. This helps improve aerodynamic performance during re-entry and the return flight, while also making better use of internal volume. The result is more usable space inside the capsule, giving passengers extra room to move around during those short but valuable moments of weightlessness. The cabin itself is about 3 meters tall and features a thin-walled, one-piece rigid shell design. That's a tough combination to pull off because it has to be both lightweight and extremely strong at the same time. Keeping the weight down is critical for launch and return, but the structure also needs to handle the intense forces and impacts that come with re-entry and landing, all while keeping the crew safe. It's also worth highlighting that this static thrust simulation test is a core part of developing the spacecraft's landing buffer system. The data from this test provides key validation for the cloud-like landing concept proposed for the CYZ-1 spacecraft. The idea is to make landings much safer and more comfortable by fine-tuning how the spacecraft absorbs impact. With this technology, the capsule aims to touch down with very low impact forces, creating a smooth, gentle landing that feels almost like being lifted by clouds and drifting down through the mist. When people hear crew capsule, the first thing that usually comes to mind is SpaceX's Crew Dragon, and that's clearly the benchmark this Chinese company is aiming for. Founded in January 2023, Interstellar positions itself as China's first commercial company dedicated specifically to manned spaceflight technology. The company is focused on developing reusable crewed spacecraft and eventually running space tourism missions. The long-term goal is to build a Chinese version of the Dragon spacecraft and make round trips between Earth and space more routine and affordable, serving both national missions and commercial customers. Interstellar is moving forward with a clear, long-term development vision built around three major stages. Right now, the focus is on CYZ-1, a reusable suborbital commercial crewed spacecraft. 
This phase is expected to take about three to four years, with the first unmanned suborbital flight planned for 2026 and a goal of completing preparations for the first commercial crewed flight by 2028. Looking further ahead, Interstellar plans to introduce CYZ-2, a reusable crewed spacecraft designed for low Earth orbit within the next six to 10 years. This spacecraft is intended to support rendezvous and docking missions, as well as point-to-point -point transportation, opening the door to applications like space hotel construction and ultra-fast intercontinental travel. The idea is to fundamentally change how long-distance travel could work in the future. In the longer term, over the next 12 to 15 years, the company aims to develop CYZ-3 for deep space missions. This phase includes commercial crewed lunar travel and the creation of an Earth-Moon economic ecosystem. These ambitions align closely with China's National Manned Lunar Exploration Program, which has already entered the prototype development stage and is targeting its first crewed lunar landing before 2030. The CYZ-1 program is progressing in parallel with this national effort and has officially moved into the engineering development phase, with prototype spacecraft now in production. At the same time, Interstellar has brought together what is currently the most comprehensive commercial crewed spaceflight team in China, with end-to-end -end capabilities spanning research, development, and operations. After more than a year of technical studies and concept validation, the team has completed detailed design work covering the spacecraft's overall configuration, escape system, aerodynamics, flight trajectory, return capsule structure, recovery system, flight control, propulsion, avionics, life support systems, and human factors engineering. The company has also partnered with leading domestic rocket manufacturers to study launch vehicle options as well as potential launch and recovery sites, laying a solid foundation for future suborbital missions. 2025 marked an exceptionally active year for China's space program, setting new records and showcasing steady progress across human spaceflight, exploration, launch vehicles, and satellite deployments. With 93 orbital launches completed, the year highlighted both operational maturity and growing ambition, making it a natural moment to reflect on what was achieved and what lies ahead in 2026. Human spaceflight remained a central pillar, with the Tiangong space station continuously crewed throughout the year despite an unexpected emergency. The Shenzhou-19 mission began the year with spacewalks focused on installing debris protection, followed by the arrival of the Shenzhou-20 crew in April. Over six months, they conducted life science experiments, tested a new AI assistant system, and carried out multiple spacewalks. In October, the Shenzhou-21 crew arrived for a routine rotation, but plans shifted dramatically in November after debris struck a window on the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft. As a precaution, the Shenzhou-20 crew returned early aboard Shenzhou-21, prompting the rapid launch of Shenzhou-22 as an emergency response mission to restore normal crew rotation capability. Despite this incident, operations aboard Tiangong continued smoothly, demonstrating resilience and flexibility in China's human spaceflight system. Beyond Earth orbit, China advanced its deep space ambitions with the launch of the Tianwen-2 Asteroid Sample Return Mission in May. The spacecraft began its long journey toward the near-Earth asteroid Kamo Oalewa, sending back images of Earth and the Moon shortly after departure. By the end of the year, Tianwen-2 was well on its way, with plans to arrive in 2026, collect samples in 2027, and return them to Earth in 2029 before continuing on to a second asteroid. This mission represents a major step forward in China's planetary science and exploration capabilities. Significant progress was also made toward crewed lunar missions. Key tests included a successful zero-altitude launch escape test of the Mingzhou crew capsule, simulated lunar landing and ascent tests of the Lanyu lunar lander, and multiple static fire tests of the powerful Long March 10 rocket. Together, these milestones reinforced China's goal of landing Taikonauts on the moon before 2030 and showed steady, methodical advancement toward that objective. Reusable launch vehicles emerged as another major theme in 2025. While fewer flew than originally expected, two historic debut missions took place in December. Landspace's Zhuq-3 and the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology's Long March 12A 
both reached orbit successfully and attempted booster recovery. Although neither booster landed intact, both flights demonstrated substantial progress and placed China firmly on the path toward routine, reusable launch systems. In Earth orbit, satellite activity expanded rapidly. The TJSW communication satellite fleet doubled in size, forming a near-continuous chain across geostationary orbit. At the same time, China likely demonstrated the world's first autonomous in-space refueling through the Shijian-25 and Shijian-21 spacecraft, a capability that could transform satellite servicing and longevity. Large constellations also ramped up deployment, with nearly 200 satellites launched for broadband, IoT, navigation, and computing networks led by the state-backed Guowang system. Looking ahead to 2026, momentum is set to continue. Looking ahead to 2026, China's space program shows no signs of slowing down, and the coming year is shaping up to be another busy one. One of the biggest developments on the horizon is the planned debut of a reusable, cargo-focused version of China's new crew launch vehicle. Officials have indicated that the first launch could happen in the first half of the year, marking an important step toward higher launch rates and lower costs. China Rocket, a spin-off from CALT under the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, confirmed in mid-December that it's aiming to fly a new, reusable, liquid-fueled rocket with a 5-meter diameter in early 2026. While details are still emerging, the vehicle clearly builds on technology developed for the Long March 10A, a rocket designed to launch the new Mengzhou Crew spacecraft to the Tiangong Space Station. The Long March 10A itself is also expected to make its first flight in 2026 and plays a key role in China's longer-term goal of sending astronauts to the moon. The broader Long March 10 family traces its roots back to the Long March 5, which first flew in 2016. A larger, tri-core version of Long March 10 is planned for future lunar missions, carrying both crews and landers. In the near term, a variant often referred to as Long March 10B appears to be optimized for hauling large payloads to orbit. According to information shared at the Wenchang International Aviation and Aerospace Forum, this version could lift around 11,000 kilograms to a 900-kilometer orbit, making it well-suited for deploying satellites for the Guowang Mega Constellation. This rocket is expected to launch from the coastal Wenchang spaceport and may feature a methane and liquid oxygen second stage, an upgrade over the kerosene engines used on other variants. Supporting these reusability efforts, CALT has also revealed a new recovery vessel designed to catch returning stages with a net system, hinting at increasingly ambitious recovery plans. All of this ties into China's push to dramatically increase its launch cadence. Large satellite constellations must be deployed on tight schedules to meet international regulations, and reusable rockets are seen as a key part of that strategy. At the same time, these developments feed directly into China's human spaceflight goals, including a crewed lunar landing before 2030. Beyond launch vehicles, 2026 is expected to bring several other milestones. The Chang'e 7 mission will head to the moon's south pole, the Mengzhou spacecraft should make its first orbital flight, and Tiangong is set to welcome its first international visitor alongside a record-breaking one-year stay by a Taikonaut. There's also hope that the long-delayed Shuntian Space Telescope might finally launch, while JUQ-3 is slated to return to flight and continue its booster recovery attempts toward the end of the year.